So the first object-oriented programming principle that we're going to take a look at is encapsulation, which is a fundamental principle of object-oriented programming that involves bundling the data or attributes or fields and the methods or behaviors that operate on that data into a single unit called a class. And encapsulation helps in hiding the internal implementation details of a class by only exposing the necessary functionalities to the outside world. So if that doesn't make too much sense, don't worry, because we're now going to go through a simple example demonstrating encapsulation. And we'll first go through a bad example with no encapsulation, and then we'll refactor that example to use encapsulation. So first of all, we're going to create a new class called bad bank account. And this is going to have a single field uh, called balance and this is a public field and then inside of our program.cs field so that this is going to be a class our program class is going to use or be a client of this bad bank account class so we're going to say bad bank account and we'll call this bad account equals new bad bank account and we're going to set the balance uh, equal to 100 so initially the balance is going to be 100 and let's just log that to the console and let's run our program to make sure everything's working correctly and we can see we get 100 logged to the console so the issue with this solution is that because this is a public field all clients also all classes that use this class can just directly uh, change this balance field to whatever value they want. So if I change this to minus 50 and then run the program, we should get no issues. Okay, now this is actually a problem because let's just say that in our program, bank, uh, bank accounts should not, uh, balances should not allowed to be, should not be allowed to be negative. Okay, so this is actually violating our program's logic. So in all of our clients, because we can just directly access this field, in all of our clients, we then have to provide some sort of uh, conditional statement. So we'd have to say like, if the uh, the amount that we want to set the balance to is negative, then we can maybe throw some error or you know display the user some issue. And we wouldn't want to have to do this inside of every single client that uses bad bank accounts. Okay, so you can see that we have some issues here because we can set this to whatever we want because this is public. So let's now use encapsulation to solve this problem. So let's create a bank account class. And we're actually now going to make the balance field private so that it can't be accessed outside of this class. Uh, so let's actually create a constructor now so that we can set the initial balance of the bank account. And we'll say decimal balance. And what we're going to do is we're going to provide a method now called deposit and then we can set the balance in here. Okay, so let's create a method called deposit. And we pass this an amount that we want to deposit. And in here what we can do is we can check that if the amount that we're trying to deposit is negative, then we can throw an error because it doesn't make any sense to deposit a negative amount of money. You don't deposit minus $50 into a bank account. You only deposit positive numbers. So we can say if amount is less than or equal to zero, then we're going to throw a new argument exception. And we will say that deposit amount must be posit positive. So deposit amount must be positive. OK. So that is preventing now users of this class from depositing negative amounts of money. And that actually solves our issue of whenever of actually having a negative balance because we now can't have a negative balance when we deposit money. OK, so what we can do now is just add the amount onto the balance. So we can say balance this dot balance plus equals the amount. So let's also create a method for withdrawing money from the bank account. So currently we can deposit money, but we also need to get money from the account. So let's create a withdraw method. So we can say public void withdraw. And
and then we need to provide an amount that we want to withdraw. Now again, we need to make sure that balance can't be negative, and so we need to make sure we don't try to withdraw uh, an amount greater than our balance. So first of all, we can check if the amount is less than zero. So we can't withdraw a negative amount because that doesn't make any sense. So we're going to say if amount is less than or equal to zero, uh, then we're going to throw a new argument exception. And we'll say withdrawal amount must be positive. So we we'll say withdrawal amount must be positive. OK, and we also need to check to see if the amount that we're trying to withdraw is greater than the amount that we have in the account, because that shouldn't be possible. So we're going to say if amount is greater than the balance, then we can throw invalid operation exception. And we can say insufficient funds. Insufficient funds. Okay. Otherwise, if we get down to here, then we can just subtract the amount from the balance. So we can say this dot balance minus equals the amount. Okay, and it'd also be nice to, uh, for the user to be able to actually see what their balance is. So let's provide a getter method. So a getter method is just a method that essentially allows the user to see a private uh, the value of a private field. So we can say public uh, decimal and then by convention what you do is you just basically prefix get onto the name of the field that we're trying to get. So we say get balance and we're just going to return the balance. Okay. So now let's take a look at how we would use this new bank account class where we have encapsulated the logic and the fields within this class and not made them available publicly to all users of this class. So we're going to first of all, let's just remove everything from in here and we're going to say bank account and bank account equals new bank account and we need to provide an initial amount. So we'll say 100. Okay. And let's actually log the balance to make sure that that has worked correctly. So we can get balance and let's deposit uh, an amount. So let's just say uh, bank account dot deposit and we'll deposit say uh, $50 and we'll log the balance there. So let's put that up there and then let's actually withdraw some money. So withdraw, let's withdraw 100 and then log to the console the balance. So that should be bank account. Okay, so let's make sure that this is all working correctly. So initially the balance should be 100. So we can see here that's correct. Then we deposit 50, so we now have 150. Then we take out 100 and we now have 50. So let's check if we actually try to initialize the account with a negative amount of money. So we should get an exception thrown. It just shouldn't allow us to do that. And as you can see, we get an exception. The deposit amount must be positive. So that's working correctly. What if we try to withdraw more than we have in the account? So here we have 150 in the account. Let's try to withdraw $200. And we should get an exception because we're trying to withdraw more than we have in the account and the withdrawal amount must be positive. So you can see here we're trying to withdraw a negative amount. I wanted to actually withdraw a positive amount there. So let's just check that. And it says, it, sh it tells us that we have insufficient funds. So that is all working perfectly. So in this example, the bank account class encapsulates the account data, so the balance, um, and all the related methods, so deposit and withdraw into a single unit. This bank account class is the sort of single unit. And the data members, the balance, are marked as private, uh, encapsulating them within the class and preventing direct access from outside of the class. And getter methods, so get balance, 
are used to provide controlled access to the private data member, the balance class, uh, field in this case. And methods deposit and withdraw are used to um, manipulate balance, ensuring that operations are performed safely and according to the business rules. So we can see here we have checks to make sure that nothing uh, incorrect, so the sort of program logic can't actually be violated from outside of the class. And the main method, or inside of this program.cs file, we are demonstrating how to create an instance of bank account and interact with its properties and methods without needing to know the internal implementation details. So we can see that the user, or so this program uh, class here, the user of bad, uh, the bank account class, uh, can't directly access the balance field as it's marked as private. So the data is encapsulated within the class. Uh, methods dictate the rules for how this data is, uh, can be accessed and modified, ensuring that our program's correct rules and logic can't be violated by users or consumers of the bank account class. For example, it's no longer possible to withdraw more money than is in the account. And encapsulation of logic inside of the methods in bank accounts also means that users don't need to worry about uh, the implementation details when we're interacting with a bank account object. For example, the user doesn't have to worry about the logic involved in withdrawing money. Um, they can just call uh, the withdraw method and the implementation details of withdrawing money are hidden from the client and encapsulated. And if the user tries to do something stupid like deposit a negative amount of money, then the program will throw an error and the user will be notified. And encapsulation of logic within methods in bank accounts allows users to interact with bank account objects without needing to know or understand the internal implementation details of how withdrawals or deposits or other operations are carried out. Users of the bank account class can interact with it using simple intuitive methods like withdraw and deposit without needing to understand the complex logic behind these operations. So encapsulation abstracts away the complexity of the implementation details, allowing users to focus on the higher level functionality provided by the bank account class. So users only need to know the public interface of the bank account class, in other words, the public methods or properties to use it effectively, while the internal implementation details remain hidden. So in summary, encapsulation allows for a clear separation between the public interface and the internal implementation of a class, providing users with a simplified and intuitive way to interact with objects while hiding the complexity of, those, of how those interactions are handled internally.